Ladies and gentlemen. Actually, no, 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 before I show everything, I gotta keep y'all interested. Okay, alright. We did do it, though. We did do it. That was a balloon. That was a balloon. Where did we leave off? We left off with this aircraft right here, uh, going up under a hexacopter and then cutting itself off and returning autonomously. No. So that's where we left off on Project Log 9. We were quote unquote ready, but there was a couple things I wanted to improve on. I'll get into these in about a second. So the airframe was pretty tired as well. I crashed a couple times, so I decided to rebuild it. Here's the tray that the Raspberry Pi goes on. Very proud as far as cable management goes. And that's the finished airframe. The next part was to test the release mechanism, do a health check, make sure everything was good. Three, two, one. There we go. That's sealed. Hopefully the idea is that I never have to open that again. Uh, but the way things go, that does not. Now, the problem with how the previous airplane worked, it wasn't controlled by airspeed at all. It just kept itself at a zero degree angle of attack. But when you, when you launch a balloon, it drifts away, you know, it drifts away with wind. So when the aircraft cuts itself off and tries to return back home, it's flying directly into the wind the whole time. And that's a problem since gliders have no motor, their only source of energy to move forward is gravity. And the wind's blowing in your face, unless you pitch down a little bit, you're just going to be standing there, you're not going to be moving. Uh, Arduplane does have settings to enable the use of airspeed control through the pitch. So if it wants to get faster, it pitches down, if it wants to get slower, it pitches up and stuff like that. I think they call it TECS, Total Energy Control System. So I um, enabled it. I mean, there's, there's really not much else to it. And after this, it was just about running more test flights and tuning the system and seeing how well it behaved. And it really just started getting more and more comfortable. It, it started becoming commonplace for this plane to just work properly. You would take the hexacopter up, the plane would cut itself off and return to home. How you make me feel? Dead flowers in my palms that I can't conceal. Got me lurking through your feet on some Navy SEAL shit. Baby, all I want is you. I've been praying real big. Talk, Ben, boss up, come slow. We were top 10 bra, this is top 10 flow. Imagine what it's like if we combine our souls. Rise to the top, kill a my I probably said it wrong with my enunciation. So, you get the idea. There's, there's a continued record of success here. I can't, I'm not even trying to brag. I can't stop having good flights. I... It's time to move on. It's time to take it to the next stage. Now, I gave myself about seven days to get this project ready. That means getting flight plans, getting all of my things together, getting the balloons, the lines, everything sorted out for the day that we're going to launch. This is day zero. And what I did on day zero is just to clean everything up. I know this is satisfying for you guys to see as well. I just scammed a nigga online for a rolling. Now, starting from day one, I really didn't have that much to do. The plane was ready to go, so I just had to slap on the video system. So next, we're going to put the camera on here, uh, just like how I had it last time. I feel like, come on now, come on, come on. I'm a good pilot, right? I'm a good pilot. Listen, I'm a good pilot. I feel like I could fly it if the camera's right here. I'm a good pilot, right? It's a good vantage point here. I'm going to be able to look at if the wires being cut and then I'm also going to be able to see the elevons. Basically, this helps debug stuff from the air. Okay, here's the current viewpoint. And I also wanted to run a safety check that night if I could just leave everything plugged in for 30 minutes and if everything would be okay. Come on, man. It's been like 20 minutes. Let's give it a shot. On. Off. Yeah, it works. It works. Come on now. Come on.
That was bad. You good? I'm sorry, man. No, yeah, it's all good. Thank you. I'm sorry about that for y'all. No, no, it's fine. It's always... It's always something. You think we can still save it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like... The whole plane looks like a Galaxy Note, bro. I'm tired of this. Nothing. Just just one project where everything just clicks into place. It can't ha- That's not okay. There's ash everywhere. There's ash. I tried, okay? There's literally ash everywhere. <laughs> On day two, it was just routine stuff. I was trying to drain my battery, so I plugged it in. I monitored the aircraft for 10 minutes. So I went outside. I'm like, yeah, this plane's cool. It'll be all right come out and I come to this table on the it's just in flames the whole room is filled with smoke and I'm just watching the flames get closer and closer to the battery and I tell my roommate I'm like yo dude grab the battery and he knows what happens to the lipos when they light on fire so we do this whole nah dude you're closer you grab it and I'm like nah you, you got longer arms and all that we grab the plane and we kind of just like chuck it outside while it's in flames and you know that's where it, the plane that did like multiple returns with no problems at all, burned up. Everything burned up. Cube Pilot Orange was gone. Our video transmitter, our RFD 900, that was gone. I gave up. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But I was out of an autopilot now. Cube Pilot sponsored us earlier in the year. The Cube Pilot Orange that you see, Cube Pilot sent that to us. Check out, do you guys know Cube Pilot? They make the best autopilots that our plane could ever use. So I hit up Cube Pilot and they were. I don't know why they did this, but they sent us another autopilot. Very good company. Philip Rouse, Miss Alice, bro. Did, Mwah. Shouts out to y'all. I appreciate you guys very much for sponsoring and helping us out with this. I started rebuilding the airplane. So during the rebuild process, I changed the length and the gauge of the nichrome wire so it burns at a lower temperature. This way, it can't set the airplane on fire anymore, no matter how long it burns for. And I also added a second redundant release mechanism. This is supposed to cover me just in case the Raspberry Pi stops working for some reason. And as you can see, I activated it on my remote right here. And it took a minute to rebuild the aircraft. But I mean, it did get rebuilt. Weather was great. I had my flight day plan set up. I had my packing list all good. I put everything in the car and I hit the road. We're doing it. We're finally on our way to Mexico. Let's do it. We're gonna, and I just, I already missed the left turn. I already missed. So we finally made it here to our launch site after hours and hours of travel. So that's gonna turn the condensation and moist and it's gonna ruin the airframe. So the road there was tough. When I got there, I got stuck in the mud as well. So currently when I'm setting my plane up and everything, my car is stuck in the mud, I can't get out. And I'm thinking about that, but you know, you know, whatever, it's cool. So I take the plane up with the hex and I wanna try it out before I you know, tie it up to a balloon first. I wanna make sure that it flies properly and everything. It's a, it's a proper thing to do um, and here's what uh, it releases but it's acting real strange it's doing a little yeah so while the hexacopter is kind of still in the air I'm trying to take the controller back and save the airplane so I, I save it for a minute like I put it in manual mode and I put it back into stabilization mode and it dives into trees and whatnot. And while all this is going on, the hex is just drifting and drifting away. So I do end up losing the hex this flight, the hexacopter. I, I'm not a fan of myself. I'm not a fan of my work. For example, I didn't check the stability directions. I had, I had entire like a flight plan written down that I should have followed, and I didn't follow it. If I had followed it, I would have checked the stability directions and realized it was entirely wrong. In the parameters, it probably said my autopilot was normal, but in reality it was yaw 90, and I didn't set that, I forgot to set that. I just... I was flustered, it was cold, I lost the hex too, and the cops were after me actually. Anyways, I gathered everything I could and I left to go home. Look at this bro, look at this, I'm gonna pick this up, pitch. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Just this, just this. If this was set to two, that entire day, this project could have been done right now. That was it. 
this is the aerodynamicist equivalent of like putting like forgetting a semicolon in your code as a computer scientist and your AI just ending humanity. This is how. It... All right, so we let's 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 get back out there. Okay, so we're here in Mexico. All right. I actually went through my flight procedure this time. I read my documentation, and I actually caught a problem with the servo directions with the radio control. So I checked the Raspberry Pi's health. Everything was good to go. So I started going through the procedures for the balloon. Okay, we have everything kind of mapped out. Next is to inflate the balloon. to do with one hand. Oh god, it got tangled up. Now we're good. Alright. It's under its own weight. Tangled down like crazy, but it's going. Still going up. It's harder to see now. Okay, I'm gonna put this down for a second. Return to launch flight mode. Okay, released. <sighs> okay, that's the first leg. <laughs> So jealous of birds, man. I'm so jealous of birds. Just look at it. It's supposed to be doing, uh, what's his face? It's supposed to be doing like 11 meters per second. Can't, I can't find it on camera, but visually we can see it. <laughs> I'm moving the directional antenna myself. nothing like it's nothing
I'm going to let it attempt landing. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to take over. But... So bad at gliding. It is so bad at gliding. How can you be that bad? Okay. I think I want to take over. Stabilize flight mode. Okay. I'm just bring it in. Put it on me. That's butter. If you're asking me a question, if you're like, yo, Tarek, is that butter? I can't believe it's not butter. That's butter, if you're asking me. Check out, do you guys know Cube Pilot? They make the best autopilots that Ardu Plane could ever use. Bro, I'm gonna do a quick advertiser break right here. They're the future for open source Ardu Plane autopilots, and I'm, I'm putting that on my life. You know, aerospace, we got triple redundant IMUs, but multiple barometers, but it also heats up the IMUs so you get accurate readings. Who else is doing that? Who who else? You're just gonna put hand warmers on your plane when, when it gets cold? Come on, get a, get a decent autopilot, man, come on. Stand cube pilot. Thank you guys for watching, I appreciate it. As far as this project goes, to go higher and to stay safe is, is a, it's a challenge, so I don't know. If if something does drop, it'll drop in the future and y'all will see it. The Sequoia, the plane in the video, design-wise, structures design-wise, I've upped it and it can carry other planes. So I might I might I might do a couple projects with that, you know what I mean? But before that, shout out Cube Pilot, shout out Dr. Alberts. I still haven't told him about about his hexacopter. I have no idea how I'm gonna tell him. Uh shout out Kamal. Fun fact, our plane is named Clementine uh, after the Cube Pilot Orange.